Gameplay versus story. There's a question that gets thrown around quite a bit in discussions about games. What's better, a good story or good gameplay? I did some research for this video where I looked at eight different surveys of this question from numerous places across the internet, and the results were not even somewhat surprising. Of the 107 responses that I gathered, 28 said that they thought both gameplay and story needed to be good in order for the game to be good. 16 said that it depends on the genre. 15 said that the story was most important, and a whopping 48 said that gameplay trumps all else. Just to clarify, those saying story was most important were saying things like, I've slogged through bad gameplay to see what comes next. While those saying gameplay was most important were saying things like, a game with a good gameplay and a bad story is still a good game, but a game can't be good without good gameplay. Also, my favorite of all these responses was this one. Alright, so now that I've brought all this up, I'm going to throw it all in the trash and talk about games I like. I really like a good story. In fact, it is one of the most important things to me in a game. Except if your name is Hollow Knight, or Dark Souls, or even a Mario game. Some games have gameplay loops that are so good that I don't care that they don't have much of a story. Some games are good enough that I play them over and over again, independently of requirement for a story. And yet somehow, there are games that I love the gameplay, but the story is so poor or unengaging that I stop playing, like Persona 5 or Borderlands 3. There are plenty of games that I love the story, but the gameplay made me stop playing, like The Witcher 3 or Greefall came pretty close too. And still too, there are games that I love that have all story and basically no gameplay at all, like What Remains of Edith Finch, The Longest Journey, and Metal Gear Solid 4. Speaking of Metal Gear Solid, I love those games, but they go wildly from both extremes. In one game, they will spend almost too much time on their stories, and in another, they will spend almost too much time on their gameplay. But I love each of them roughly equally in spite of that fact. There are some games that had such good stories that I wanted to keep playing it well after I finished the story, but I didn't. More often than not, as soon as I finish the main story of a game, I am tempted to stop playing at all, even if I adore the gameplay. One case of this was with Death Stranding. I was feeling the main theme of that game so hard that I wanted to help others through their experiences, but as soon as I saw the third credit sequence, I turned the game off and haven't picked it up since. Maybe I'm just a really fickle gamer that can't make up his mind on what he likes. Well, in reality, I think I know why I like or dislike these games, and despite their differences, it's actually the same reason for each. In a game like Hollow Knight, the gameplay is in the hot seat, and the story, while present and interesting, never gets in the way of the enjoyment of that gameplay. Same with Dark Souls, or any given 3D platformer. Persona 5 and Borderlands 3 spent too much time on a story that I thought was so poor that I stopped playing Persona 5 and I would have stopped Borderlands 3 if I wasn't playing with my wife. In the case of Witcher 3, I found that I loved the story, but the gameplay got in the way so much that I stopped being interested. The two seemed to be conflicting with each other, same with Greedfall. In both games, it almost seemed like the gameplay was just an obligatory break from the story, so there would be a game part of this video game with little life or love pouring out of the gameplay. In Hollow Knight, I can feel the love in every bit of the gameplay, the animations and the way they convey the actions you and your enemies take. In story-driven games like Edith Finch or The Longest Journey, the story is the forefront and the gameplay is only there as a facilitator to get you to the different set pieces. And in the case of Metal Gear Solid, both the gameplay and the story feel like they work in harmony to create an experience that doesn't bug me even when the game spends a little too much time on its story or even not enough in some cases. And games that have the two systems working together on a thematic level will leave me without a desire to continue after the main story plays out, like in the case of Death Stranding and many others like it. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just that the gameplay and story integrated so well that I think there's a subconscious response in my mind that, when the story is over, the gameplay should be too. Now let's pull that research back out of the recycle bin and take a look at gameplay and story integration. No, I'm not talking about meta experiences like Undertale, nor am I talking about the dreaded ludonarrative dissonance. I'm talking about gameplay and story working in tandem to create an experience that is better than the sum of their parts. This may be a good time to mention that I'm not trying to claim I'm the first person to come up with this idea. But considering this question still gets asked all the time in discussion of games as a medium, I thought this video was so relevant. The thing that all of those examples were referencing was the game's ability to focus on the element it wanted to focus on and not let anything else get in the way of that. So, if a game wants to have a really engaging and entertaining gameplay loop, then spending a ton of development time and wrestling the control from the player every few minutes to show a cutscene may be unwise. On the other hand, putting a really in-depth and complicated gameplay system into what remains of Edith Finch would almost certainly cause that game to be lesser. 
You see, this question misses the point. It's okay to prefer a game that focuses on gameplay over one that focuses on story, but it's unwise to say gameplay is always king because when we get experiences like the ones in all AAA titles where they just stuff as much bloated gameplay as they can into their open world schlock fest. But at the same time, it's also unwise to say story is king because then we get a lackluster story shoved into those same AAA titles that just want to have engaging gameplay. We should put more stock in the developer's ability to confidently say, this game doesn't need a story with branching dialogue trees and multiple endings, or this game doesn't really need a story at all, or this game would be better if you just have simple contextual interactions with the game world in order to facilitate story progression rather than a complex game system, rather than catering to these two options in the discussion. I'm going to relate it in another way that I'm sure everyone watching this will understand. Jazz music, the most unequivocally loved genre of music there is. The key to live jazz improv is that there are times when one particular instrument is shining and the others get out of the way. If every instrument in the group started freestyling at the same time, it would sound like, well, this. On the other hand, this is what it sounds like when it's done right. One thing you can notice is how, first of all, the saxophone is obviously meant to be the star, but when she stops playing, the pianist will come out of the texture slightly to give it some interest in those quiet spots in between. The instruments aren't both starring, but they also aren't clashing. When we pose the question, gameplay versus story, I don't think we realize that it automatically puts gameplay and story at odds. If you enjoy gameplay, then a game that wants to tell you a story is getting in the way of the fun you could be having. But if you enjoy story, then a game spending too much time forcing you through dungeons or gameplay set pieces would be seen as wasting your time. Both of these stances assume that every game should cater to their taste, but shouldn't it be fine for a team to make a game they want to only have a good story or just good gameplay? Not every game should be for everyone. Somewhere in the middle is a place where we can realize that gameplay and story should not be at odds. They should work together in order to provide the experience the developers intend, and that doesn't always have to mean that they convey themes through gameplay or that the gameplay somehow affects the story or vice versa. It just means that the gameplay and the story aren't fighting with each other, that if one is meant to be the star, then the other gets out of the way. It shouldn't be gameplay versus story, it should be gameplay and story instead.